Howdy folks, this is Hard Rock Harris, and I'm here with Mrs. Annie Rickard, two miners from Calico's Heyday. We would like to welcome you aboard the Calico and Odessa Railroad. Howdy there folks, we all please stay seated as we take a ride together along the back country of Old Calico. As we go around this first curve, notice the miners cabins built along the canyon walls. As crude as they appear, they were ideal for protecting us from the hot summers and cold winters here at Palco. And not for the independent types who like to fend for themselves. Of course, many miners stayed in boarding houses, mainly for modern conveniences, like home cooking. I got my nickname, Hard Rock, because that was exactly the kind of mining we did around here. The rock is so hard, and we didn't have any water to use for mining, so we had to hack and blast away at the rock. During the boom years, Calico's 10 square mile mining district goes to the population of nearly 2,000, with almost 1,000 actually living in the town side of Calico. After the mining ended, Calico really was a ghost town. That's to say, it was mainly abandoned. But it was restored and reconstructed by the Knott family in the 1950s. Back then, they had workers actually living here. These folks served the role of security for the town a tradition that continues to this day. As we round this next curve, look to the left of the engine and notice the pile of rocks painted white with a white marker on top. This is an example of what a cornered monument looked like. We use them on all four corners of our claims to alert everyone that they may be trespassing and to remind claim jumpers to stay away. Remember how the first traces of silver were discovered right on the ground in the spring of 1881 and Calico's silver rush was on. Miners came from all over, including well-known towns such as Virginia City, Bowie, and Tombstone, Arizona. I certainly do, Hard Rock. I had silver fever too. Coming up on the ride is one of the original ore cars we miners used. We would push these out of the mine and stockpile our ore until we had a train load full. Then it was shipped to a processing mill on a narrow gauge train similar to the one you're riding on now. That particular train was called the Waterloo Mine Company Railroad, and the spur would run off of it to ride up Calico's Wall Street Canyon. The closer a railroad could be run to the mines, the better. This large area to the left of the train was where some of the miners lived. There is still one surviving wall out there. It's outlined in white. Beyond the mountain, to the northeast, was East Calico, where, among others, the big Bismarck mine was. There was a little community out there with a store and a saloon. The Stacy brothers carried mail the mile and a half between Bismarck and Calico, even training their dog, Orsi, to do it for them. I remember that. They strapped a saddlebag right on his back so he could carry the mail and packages. As we pause here, take a look at the top of King Mountain, where your engineer is now pointing. Look at the last letter in Calico and run your eyes down about 300 feet and a little to the right and you should see a mine entrance in the side of the mountain. This is a tunnel for the Silver King Mine, one of the richest and largest mines in the Calico Mining District. It produced about $10 million in silver in about 11 years. There were about 30 miles of tunnels on 14 different levels inside that mountain, belonging to several different mines. However, the only mine that is open daily for guests to safely go into themselves is the Maggie Mine. Just below the Silver King, there appears to be just an ordinary pile of rocks. Actually, that is remnants of the Silver King Mine itself. Not long ago, that pile of rocks was assayed to contain a few million in silver. But before you jump out of the train and climb the hill to fill your pockets, I should tell you that it would take millions more just to process that silver. So that would put you in the hole. Go back to playing the lottery. Now as we get moving, look out to the left. It wasn't too far from there that a man got himself shot for trying to jump my mining claim. I had already warned that Mr. Tober about trespassing on Michael Gone to mine, but he ignored me and showed up again. This time he got grazed by a few bullets I sent his way from my little pistol. He called the law and had me arrested before I could unload my whole gun on him. 
The jury did not find me guilty, as I was just protecting my property. Well, Annie, glad no one was seriously hurt, except maybe that Mr. Tobler's pride. Now, if y'all look left, this is an ore crusher called an Arista. Miners would hitch a horse or mule to that crossbar and have it walk round and round, which caused the steel ball to drag over and crush the ore before it was taken to a processing mill. Of course, by the 1880s, this method was kind of old-fashioned, but it was still a respectable way of making sure every bit of silver was scraped up. We did work hard to get all that silver. Now have a look over to one of my favorite views from Calico. Down there is the Silver Valley, as we called it. And past that old dry lake is the sandy bed of the Mojave River. In those early years, drinking water for Calico had to be brought over from the river to try to float around at the time. That sold for about 5 to 20 cents a gallon. That water supply also gave birth to our neighboring town of Jagged, when the railroad was built right through there. See, just like the smaller narrow gauge locomotives, the big trains of those days ran off the steam from the water filled boilers. Another one of our neighboring towns was Borate. It may no longer be visible, but when the boom ended here, some miners got jobs over there as borax miners for the Pacific Coast Borax Company. The Borate and Daggett Railroad was even built right up into Mule Canyon, making for a more efficient operation for the company. It became the last place in California where the famous 20 mule teams were ever used. Now, if you all look over at Main Street, you can see the same view we did as we ventured into town for supplies and relaxation. There are actually five buildings on Main Street that have been standing since the 1880s, when it was a bustling place. Calico was a real town for about 20 years. We had a post office, school, courtroom, newspapers, and a slew of stores. Not to mention, quite a few saloons, I can promise you that. Luckily, we even had doctors, lawyers, and a justice of the peace. My favorite place was the town hall, where we had dances and all kinds of entertainment. Those were dandy, huh? Now as we get closer to the train depot, take a look down into the gully to the left of the train. These ruins are from the Chinatown, where almost 40 Chinese lived and worked at Calico during the boom years. Ailey did laundry for the miners and operated a couple of restaurants. Well, folks, we hope you had fun and maybe even learned a few things on our tour today. Please remain seated until the train comes to a complete stop. Be sure to grab all your gear, like purses, hats, glasses, and those little miners, too. Please come back and join us again. We love having you. Yes, we do. Don't forget to mosey over to the Maggie Mine. I hear there's a great tour over there, too. Oh, 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 o